everyone. I know that you've received your make and take art project uh, from one of our neighborhood nights or from the Kaleidoscope Festival this year. So I'm just making a little homemade video on what you can do once you get it. Because I know myself, I like visual instructions sometimes. There are instructions located on the back here that you might have read already, but I'm happy to show you um, how I make uh, the circles and other things you can do with them. So keep watching the video for some tips and tricks and a demonstration on how to actually use these little circular looms. All right, thank you. Hi everyone. So you might have something like this up. These little Weave Community Art Project postcards. So the first step you're gonna do, you know, yours is gonna look like this or it might have a different um, image on the front. Did you know that these pictures are actually original paintings of mine that I've kaleidoscoped into this digital image for this project, special for this project? So uh, it's just some little fun fact I wanted to share with you. All right, so the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take that yarn off the back of the postcard, and just pull it off there, and you're going to take the staple out. All right, so you've got the yarn free, yay! Now you're gonna get some scissors and you're just gonna cut around the circle. I know, you're wrecking the beautiful postcard now. That's okay, we're gonna make something beautiful together. So you're just gonna cut around the circle. There's dotted line all the way around all the circles. Uh, any kind of postcard you would have got for this project it has this nice dotted line around it. So just cut around that as best you can. And even if you are cutting around the opposite side, that's okay too, okay? So either side has the same dotted line. And you're just going to go all the way around. It doesn't have to be perfect, it just needs to get cut out. Alright, so once you have that cut out, you'll have just your circle left. And I'm just going to use this side for, um, for better to see lines, I guess. I like the back side because you can see the black dots a lot better on contrast with the white paper. So, I'm just going to cut the where the dotted lines are all the way around and make some little slits all the way around the circle. Easy peasy. Did you know that I used 8,000 meters of yarn for this project? Oh my gosh, that's a lot of yarn. It was fun going and getting it at a giant cart full. Also, because I want this to be as environmentally as possible, I made sure that these were all printed on 100% post-consumer recycled paper so that it's better for the environment. And you can also recycle um, parts of your postcard when you're done as well. Although the writing along the edge is kind of nice, so if you do any scrapbooking or collaging or crafting, you might want to keep some of those words to, um, as a memory of this project. And I'm also going to show you um, how you can do that using this as well with some collage. I'll probably make a few videos. I will label them uh, different things. So some of the some of the weavings that I've done already, I just wanted to show you some of the things that I've done with them. So you can weave on this side of the loom. So where the image is, you can actually weave on the front of it and it goes really nice with the image that's behind them. You can also choose to weave on the opposite side. So with the white side facing up, which is really nice. Now, other options you have are to leave them on the loom, which would make a really nice keepsake just this way. You could hang them on a string, use them um, on your Christmas tree, or you can hang them on a string or put a magnet on the back and you put them on your fridge. These make nice keepsakes as well, just as they are. So you could leave them on the actual circular paper looms that we've made together. Now, another option you have is to take them right off, and I will show you how to do that in some of my videos. So I took a few of them off. This one's kind of nice. It's got the tassels still on it. And I have another one here somewhere. There's my itty bitty one. And then I have one with the tassels cut off of it. So some of the things that you can do with these, you could make a keychain. Um, these could also be decorations too. So you could just tie them on. I, I have one on my water bottle and I have one on my purse and I have one in my car. So they just become little keepsakes and memories about um, this project, this weaving community project together. 
Also, I'm not sure if you know this or not, but at the Kaleidoscope Festival this summer, we will be doing life-size looms like this. So now that you've got the got to practice with these smaller ones, come to the festival on August 11th this summer and uh, participate in making life-size large ones. They're gonna be really fun. So let's get some practice with this one. So the first thing you do is you take the white yarn and it doesn't matter which side you do this on, you choose. And there's not a right way or a wrong way. So get, uh, don't think there's like perfection required for this project. I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. Okay, so it's okay to make mistakes because that's where the fun happens sometimes. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're just gonna put the white yarn through one of the slits and hold it on the opposite side. And you're gonna weave back and forth across the loom. you have these spokes that we're making across the loom. See how it's also making, um, it's also crisscrossing on the back too as you're doing this. Uh, where am I going here? This one. Nope, this one. Okay, and then back over this way. And, oh, look at that. This one's going to go over there. Okay, and so then you've got this pattern on the front. It's not quite all the spokes, but we're going to fix that in a second. So a couple of tips that I'm going to give you right now. You can use a little piece of tape. You can tape these down on the back. Now, because I've made a few of these now, I don't necessarily have to do that. Um, I just kind of hang on to them as I'm weaving. But this is your first one. I recommend just grabbing a little piece of tape, sticking it down so they stick down those ones that are sticking out. And you can even um, trim the thread if you want. Okay, so then you end up with this uh, nice, and, uh, nice and tight. No, not too tight, but um, so that the white yarn is woven across the loom so it looks like it has spokes, okay? And then what you do with the colorful piece, you might have different colors depending on when I was cutting the 8,000 meters of yarn. As you can see here, there's all different colors, okay? And that's what makes a community so diverse is all the different parts of us. So um, I'm just gonna lift up the, the strings on this little mini loom here, and I'm gonna poke my colored thread underneath Pushing it through. And then I'm just going to tie this, it in the center. Okay, nothing fancy, just tie it in the center. Okay, once you've done that part, you can make a knot, you can leave the string long, you can trim the string, or you can tuck the string under. Okay, whatever you want, there's no right or wrong way here. So for this one, I'm just gonna tuck the string kind of under and forget that that little piece is there because I'm not gonna see it later anyways. Okay, so then you take your long piece of string and again, because I've done this for a while, I don't necessarily need to use this, but if this is your first one, which it probably is, I would recommend another little piece of tape. So what you would do with that is you just grab, it doesn't matter what kind of tape either. I use this green painter's tape because it's easier to get off after, but you could use um, the clear scotch tape or uh, masking tape, whatever you got. So I just take a little piece of tape and I wrap it really tight on the tip. This kind of makes like a, a needle almost on the top of the yarn um, out of tape. It helps to push the yarn um, through the, the loom, through the warp that we've made on the spokes of this circular loom, okay? So um, I usually start near where the where the knot is in the middle, uh, whichever um, spoke is closest, but it doesn't matter which one you start on. Start wherever you want. I'm gonna just bring this closer so everybody gets a better vision of this. And I just start by going under one spoke, and over the next, under the next one, over the next, under, pull it through, don't pull it too tight, over the next, under the next one, it, you just keep doing over, under, all the way around the spokes, pulling it through as you go, because it's a circle, it's easy to turn as you go in here. So let's see, under this one, over this one, under this one, over the next one. Now if you haven't taped your uh, yarn, just be patient. It'll be a little bit of a slower process without this little pointy end. That's the way I do it usually, because I like this little, it's like a little meditation, little, little meditative process for me to make these little guys. So I just continue to do that. 
then as you're doing that, you start to see the weave taking place in and out, up and down and all around the circle here. Okay? So you just continue to do that until you run out of yarn. And once you get to the end, it's going to look something like this. Okay? And what you do at the end, there's a few options you can do. Um, you can tuck your yarn under, which is what I believe I did with this one. Let me just have find the end here. See, I did such a good job of tucking it under, I can't even find it. <laughs> okay, so all you do is, there's two ways of doing this. You, well, there's many ways, but here's a couple of suggestions. You can just tuck the end of the yarn in once you're done weaving. Um, or you can tie it on one of the spokes. So you could tie it off on one of the spokes here. Okay, and then, uh, you have a few decisions to make. Do you want to keep it on the loom like these two have been done? Or do you want to cut it off? So let's cut this one off and I'll show you how to do that process. Okay? So I'm just going to turn it around the back here and see what the back looks like because I really like these images. I really want to keep that image. And I'm just going to cut the yarn in the back. Okay, that's it. Just cut it. And then my little rule of thumb is take two pieces and tie them together that are beside each other. So I've got two pieces, tie them together. And you just keep doing that all the way around the circle, okay? Take two pieces of the white yarn, tie them together. Okay. You do that all the way around until you're done, until it's right off of the loom. And then you can actually use this little circular cardboard loom again if you want. If you have your own yarn hanging about, um, you could make a whole bunch of them. Um, when you come to the festival on the 11th, I'm gonna have a little garland around the tent area with all different um, looms, or with all different little weavings around them. So a few things that you can do with these is you can make keychains out of them, you could, oh my gosh, there's so many options for these. I'll probably have lots more ideas by the time you come to see me at the festival, but I was thinking a keychain would be cute, a magnet would be cute, um, a garland is my, it was my first idea. So tying all these little circles onto one long piece of yarn um, in all different colors, make that nice rainbow colorful effect. You could use that in your, in your decorating at home, um, however you like actually, it would be nice. You could even make earrings out of these. You could make a pin out of them by putting a pin back on them. You could sew them on to your favorite t-shirt or jeans. I don't know, there's so many options. So just tying these little spokes off now, two at a time, you're going to end up with all these. It's going to come right off the loom when you're done. And then you're going to decide if you like these little fringes or not. Um, so you can keep those or you can cut them off. So for, I'm going to leave these ones on because I think they're kind of cute. There's lots of other things you can do once you have these. If you leave the little fringes at the end, you can uh, make tassels. So in one of my videos, I might do that <laughs> to show you. Um, but that's pretty easy to do too if you if you have extra yarn you'll need extra yarn for that though and see when I when I finish tying these off because there's an odd number of spokes there's gonna be a little um, a spoke without a friend haha <laughs> so give them a friend just take one from one of the other sides and tie them together and that way it finishes off the circle so the circle is then complete and whole and that's what a circle is about unity and wholeness and I'm really um, happy you shared this project with me and I hope that you enjoyed it and it gives you a little keepsake from um, the community art projects this summer with the city of Coquitlam in the neighborhood park nights and the festival the kaleidoscope festival on the August 11th this year so I hope to see you at one of those thanks for watching